Okay, hello. So this is for my first vlog and I'm just gonna go through my sketchbook. So, let's go through it. I'm on my kitchen floor um, because I can't find anywhere with like a white background that's big enough. So I've done um, my FMP mind map and I've been, like as I've been talking about through the video, I'm focusing on like uh, themes of race, transracial adoption, identity, gender and journey um, and like what I've been kind of looking at is the idea of vitrines and I'm also interested in documentary art, looking at how um, I connect with my culture or how I feel disconnected with my culture, like my culture as in um, like Chinese culture and how do I connect to it even though I feel so disconnected. So I connect with it through Asian cooking um, and food and that's something that I really want to explore in my own work and potentially through documentary film. So I want to I'm interested in like maybe creating a short film of me cooking like the process of like going to the Asian sh shops and then coming home and like making this food um yeah that's just something I'm interested in um and I've just been exploring different ideas I've mainly done a lot of artist research this week um I've reflected back on my favorite sketchbook pages um from the second unit and yeah i went to the surrealism beyond borders exhibit um which was in my last few it was in one of my last vlogs um i went with my friend james and i went with nate um but i just need to do annotations and then i'm gonna go and visit um what's it called the British Museum. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna put that in one of these pages. And uh, here's my, um, what's it called? Contact sheet. Here's my contact sheet. Um, and I'm gonna add some more photos to that for primary resources. And then as I've been speaking about, I did a page on Zoe Loudermilk Oppenheim. And that, this was the exhibit that I was um, par participating in um, last year and I participated through um, her, her interview process. And I also took photos of my adopted clothes. Well, I don't know what you refer them to, like they're the clothes that I was given when I was adopted um, and they're really cute. I really like the idea of like the shoe, like the baby shoes and socks, which is just here. Um, yeah, and I, no, that's for next week. Yeah, so the baby shoes and socks. Um, and then I've continued my research on the one child policy, some more primary resources with my paperwork, photos of me when I was younger, more baby shoes and socks. And I researched Jessica Emmett. Um, and Jessica Emmett is an artist who um, is exploring colour. And um, she pixelates photo, like images and um, her photographs into almost a paint by numbers or what should I call it a hex hex traction um, like in like hex codes um, and she reduces these photos down to the colors so she's exploring whether race really matters as a transracial adoptee and um, then I continue to look at um, where I'm from continuing on with the documentation then i look at like maps of china and um, this is obviously the whole of china and then i was born in day i was born in day which is in wuhan um so i zoom in in there and i've been trying to find the adoption place where i was born but i can't find it on google maps i continue on with my health record and then i looked at um sa sa and kyung um, or Ng Kyung Sa, and she's a Korean um, American artist, and her work Diaspora explores um, 
the emotional resonance resonance um, of transracial adoptee experiences as well as like the ideas of race, ethnicity and culture and she examines she examines this through um, a diasporic lens so she looks at the Asian diaspora um, and it's really interesting because she kind of brings in the idea of um, the almost paradox of being raised white even though you are Asian um, because you are almost viewed by your friends and family as a white person um, but then you reach this disconnect when you're older um, as the world begins to see you as an Asian person because you are um, and then this causes like a lot of disconnection and identity issues within the adoptee um, and yeah it's really it was really interesting like exploring this idea of like the disconnect between your identity and like the way you've been brought up as a caucasian person yeah so anyway that's something that i'm really interested in exploring um yeah she was really interesting um and then i've gone on to look at um Yu Chin Lefevere. This is Yu Chin Lefevere. Um, she is a Belgian artist who um, was also a Chinese adoptee and she um, produced a photographic book called The Land of Promises and it's so interesting. She basically went to China and went to where she was um, born and like adopted from and yeah, she like visits China and explores this narrative of Chinese adoptees. Um, yeah, and she kind of explores her like conflicting relationship with China and her race and how it if, like how it has affected her like her own identity. So a quote from her is, I, I dreamed of being white so that I would be left alone. To feel like I belong to my family, relatives and friends, I denied my Asianness and internalised racism. And I think that is something that is really important to explore is like this idea of internalised racism towards yourself, um, even if you don't realise it, like, like people calling you like a banana, like you're yellow on the outside and then white on the inside because you've been brought up Caucasian. So it is something that's really interesting to explore and how I I would identify with that. Um, and her artistic practice focuses on the intimate, the human, childhood, memory, family and the breaks in between. And her work is situated between like a documentary style and like an intimate um, personal work. So yeah, she was really interesting. I am fascinated by her work. I want to find photographs of when my parents went over to China and adopted me because I know that my mum would have taken loads of photos of China and I want to get those primary um, photographs down. But this week I was more focusing on artist research. Um, I've continued on finding primary research. This is a book called I Love You Like Crazy Cakes by Rose Lewis. This was one of my favourite books growing up. It's about um, a mother going over, well, a woman from America going over to China and adopting a, ba uh, a baby girl. And it's such a lovely book. The illustrations are so sweet. Um, the illustrations are by Jane Dyer. And yeah, I just wanted to put this book in um, as as it's like part of my own personal memorabilia um, and like how I was introduced to like being adopted because um, you can't really hide the fact that I'm adopted like my whole family's English and white whereas I am Chinese <laughs> and so is my sister so you, it wouldn't be like the case of we're gonna hide being adopted from you like they can't do that um, so we were always told that we were adopted from when we were like from literally when we came over. Um, then I went back to this um, interview with 
Zoe Loudermick Oppenheim. Um, and I've just kind of zoomed in on my actual um, interview. And yeah, I wanted people to be able to read it. I've included a map of where we were from, like where I am, like, like the food and like, I just thought it'd be interesting to have this interview in there um, as it's really personal, like it's really personal and something that I'm um, proud that I participated in. Um, as we move on, I've moved over to thinking about the lack of representation in art um, and Asian hate and this is something that I have been tackling in my own life um, and it's deeply personal. I've been looking at the effect of the coronavirus on the Asian community, specifically Asian British community, um, because that is a community I'm part of. And like Zoe and like many other um, Asian people, the coronavirus really connected us to the Asian community. Um, in a very sad way because of the rise in hate crime towards Asian people. Um, but yeah, I felt way more connected with exploring my culture and my identity as a Chinese person because of the coronavirus. Um, and because I was almost separated into this group due to my um, race and my appearance. So yeah, it's something that I've wanted to explore in my art and I don't feel like it is like disconnected from this project at all because I'm talking about my own experience as a Chinese British person and my adoption and how it has affected my life. So I move on to these articles. I've referenced a few different articles. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of articles I could have gone on to. So I've gone on to... Um, Left out of the picture, lack of representation in art, um, in arts and culture by Rhea Singh. Um, and she kind of explores the idea of the lack of um, Asian people within the creative arts industry. Um, and then I move on to anti-Asian hate crimes up to 21% in the UK during coronavirus. Um, confronting hate against East Asians, a photo essay by um, Nazia Parveen, um, yeah, and I also watched a lot of videos about like interviews with Asian people um, and this poor man got um, attacked at, in the height of the pandemic um, in Cambridge because of his race um, and then I wanted to connect it with like artists that are exploring this as well. So I, I looked at Ai Weiwei, who did um, a documentary on the coronavirus called Coronation. Um, and he was kind of more exploring like how the pandemic broke out and like what happened in China. But I thought it was like an interesting link. But yeah, I was just exploring how um, the coronavirus has affected different people. And then I want to link it to my own personal experience so this kid shouted coronavirus at me and then donald trump chinese virus kung flu nation plague china um yeah um and then i moved on to, to i really cannot pronounce chinese names i find them extremely hard but i'm gonna say chi chi ju j i will write the name somewhere here um and i've explored him because he's a contemporary chinese artist who primarily works in video and photography but i was specifically looking at his work um called tattoos uh, and he explores the burden that symbols have on identity and the independence of a human being so again he links to the idea of identity and he's got these big photographs of people with um chinese symbols on um ignore the calligraphy i did that next week or this week which is the week i'm filming this in um and i'll explain that in the next vlog so yeah i've just been exploring him and ha like how do symbols um etc affect the perspective people have on you um and 
how personal ideologies and personal expressions are instead replaced by the need to fit into an acceptable mould as symbols can change a person until a person becomes a vehicle used to display logos and characters. Um, and what's really interesting is that the title tattoos suggests that um, the impositions of the symbols don't just run on the surface level, they are um, deeper like a tattoo. So yeah, and then I looked at um, Hannah Lim, who is a sculptural artist, as you can see, there and there, and she makes these beautiful um, oriental inspired polymer clay um, sculptures and she creates them she creates these sculptures to be furniture like works and she uses really distinct color palettes um and what's really interesting with the themes of hannah lim's work is she almost explores she explores the idea of the orient and how all the how the west has appropriated um Chinese and Japanese and Middle Eastern um, artworks and symbols and patterns and things and taken them um, and been inspired by them and created more um, and created like this work in something that's more suitable for the Western palette. So I think it's pronounced Shinwazim. Shin Shinwa's me. Anyway, I don't know, but it's Chinese inspired decorative arts um, that have been like t like taken by European people. Yeah, I don't think that made sense. She explores her Singaporean and British heritage through this work, and I think it's so beautiful. Her work's really interesting and so intricate. And then in my 3D, no, in my printmaking workshop with Jessie, we explored the idea of word protest. Um, and we looked at Mark Wallinger and Banksy. So we made our own like little protest. And I was like, no government. Um, yeah. I've printed out some QR codes to make a food page. I'm going to explore food later on in my project, but I thought I would start that now. Um, and then I did some artist research on Song Dong and Mark Dion and the idea of like collecting and um, collecting things and like organising things like in a vitrine or something because I want to maybe collect my personal memorabilia and display it um, potentially for my final piece and then I looked at Wang Jin Song's Stand Family and Taryn Simon who explores family trees um, and Wang Jin Song's Stand Family is um, exploring contemporary Chinese culture and the effects of the one child policy because almost every family looks, looks the same if you can see there's two parents and one child and um what like Wang Jin Song invited these families to participate Wang Jin Song invited these families to participate in photo shoots where the parents invariably elected to pose flanking their one child um the grid format highlights the fact that they're all uniform and nothing's different yeah and then i went on to explore the idea of the vitrine um because that's something that i'm interested in potentially doing for my final piece and i also looked at mona hatoum who is a i think she's palestinian Palestinian, don't quote me on that, I cannot remember. But I was looking at her work, Hotspot, which refers to a place of military unrest um, using delicate red neon lights. To, she outlines the contours of the continents. This sculpture presents the entire globe as a danger zone. 
as the world is continually caught up in conflict and unrest. So yeah, that's basically what I did in week one. I did I did do a chunky bit in week one, but it's because it's more spread out. I need to do more primary work inside those pages and that will be for week two. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my um, ramblings of what I did in my sketchbook this week. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if anyone in the public is watching this, remember to like and subscribe and yeah, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next week in my next sketchbook review.